Marisha Ray played a lot of interesting characters, from Galeth to Beauregard to now a full 180 from her original character, we have goth mommy Bellatrix Lestrange. Come on, you can't tell me you didn't notice it. The black clothes, the black hair, even the white stripe going in it. She's got the full creepy vibe going. Hello everyone, Evan from Monkey DM. Today we're gonna talk about how to make an edgy character without everybody at the table hating you, because that's often what happens to these kind of characters. Marisha Ray found the perfect mix on how to do so, and I get the chance to talk about Campaign 3 of Critical Vault, which I'm super excited about because I'm absolutely loving it so far. What makes Ladna so cool? Let's break it down. Embracing the edge. So Marisha created an edgy character and really, really embraced it. What do I mean? Well, just look at the way she created Ladna. She was like, hmm, what's the edgiest race? Probably some kind of undead, so she chose the revived one. Then, yeah, undead warlock or shadow sorcerer. Why not both? And so she has this like super dark character now. Funny enough, it's not actually the first time we see such an edgy character on Critical Role. Remember the owl bear? Two of the world's greatest predators, the owl and the bear. <laughs> well, frightening. Strike nowhere near as much terror as that alliance between them. I am known as the Owlbear. <laughs> yeah, that one. So by actually going 100% into the character that she's doing, it actually makes the character a lot more enjoyable for everybody at the table. Why is that? Well, because they see that you are committed and dedicated to your character to the bone. As a person, I know I don't really like an actor who gives a half performance to their role. What we want to see is a character who's so fully dedicated to their character that you don't even realize that they're an actor. And now you're gonna tell me, oh, thanks, Evan. Yeah, I'm definitely just gonna become an actor so that I can play a D&D character. It's not what I mean. What I mean is give your personal best to your character. It doesn't have to be word class level. This is critical role we're talking about. It's a show that generates millions. We're talking about you at your own personal D&D table. What matters is your own performance. You just give it your best and that's already a very good start. And with practice and time you're gonna ease in more and more easily into this character and the performance is just gonna get more and more enjoyable. Others are gonna be more committed to it as well and they're gonna be like oh my god I, I love this. Before we move on to the next point, if you can make sure to subscribe and like the video, it really does help. And maybe you'll roll a natural 20 on the big die next time. What I really like about Ladna is that she's definitely an edgy character, but she's done so well that she's getting praise everywhere. Just check Reddit, Twitter, just anything. People are loving it, myself included. Which is really nice considering the hate that Marisha got for Caliph back in the days. Now, another very important thing that Lodna does is that the character was created with the idea of a party in mind. What do I mean by that? A big trap that players who want to play an edgy character tend to fall into is that they want to play an edgy loner. Which makes sense. Most movies and animes that we can watch tend to be alone. Batman or Sasuke or even my favorite Christmas movie, Die Hard. Edgy as hell, but they work alone. And that completely clashes with the core essence of D&D which is a group game. Ladna is not like this. She is certainly full of darkness and creepiness, but one thing she is is a party member. So much so that you can see through her character that she's actually craving social interactions and really looking for them. <laughs> Scoop her up. I just like a spindly spider <laughs> climb. <laughs> I feel her dead rat like brush against my thigh. Yeah. And it's great thinking on Marisha's part because she knows that at Critical Role they're a cast, so you can't have a character that wants to be played alone. And that's true of D&D in general. So make sure that your character is willing to play in a team and make sure they're also willing to do quests. Now, not only does she do that, but she also goes crazy with the creepy descriptions. Instead of saying, I use my form of dread or I cast Eldritch Blast, she's actually a lot more descriptive with what she says and it makes the experience better. For example, I'm gonna take uh, the icker from the goopy thing that he just sliced open and having his bardic inspiration, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna just like lick my mm. fingers. I like lick this black icker and then it's, it's like starts pouring out of my eyes. 
and <clears throat> I can still... So if you want to give that extra oomph to your characters, narrating your descriptions not only adds to the collective storytelling, but it makes the character pleasant to the audience. The audience being the other players at the table. Narrative description is great, but Ladna, I mean Marisha, doesn't actually stop there. Even her whole gesture and mimicking, everything is on point to reflect what Ladna is doing. Just take a look at this. Stay together. You guys hold hands or something. Hello. Okay, let's go. Let's hold hands mm -hmm. while we investigate. <laughs> See, the whole creepy descriptions and the claws and the... Many of her abilities are not inherently unsettling or dark, but she turns them that way. And that adds that much more flavor to the character. I think the best example of it is that she did it so much that the other party members started picking up on it and adding to it as well. Most notably Travis when they started doing the echoes of Lodna's telepathical messages. Aura! <laughs> are you well? Yes. But I truly believe that because of what I described earlier and Lodna's over-the-top creepiness, that's why the other party members jumped in and helped her push that character concept even further. But apart from the creepy echoes, there's just many more examples of Marisha being completely unsettling on things that shouldn't be, and yet she does it. There is also Marisha's entire body language which comes into play. When she starts role-playing Ladna, not only the voices that come out are creepy, her whole body starts doing weird gestures and movements. So something I've heard is that the current cast of Critical War is not gonna do great in the long run because the characters are too cliche. My instinctual response to that is, have you seen Critical Role Campaign 1? We had the horny bard, the edgy rogue, the dumb barbarian, you get my point. So I don't think that argument holds much ground, even when talking about Marisha's character, Ladna, because even if the character starts off as a cliche, a little meme -y, a little dark, a little edgy, it can be given a lot of depth as the story goes on. There's a lot more to the character than the appearance that they first project. Don't believe me? Remember that moment from Campaign 1? Heavy spoiler ahead by the way in a very tough battle where Grog and Scanlan happen to well I'll just show you and you turn the corner of Grog and you see uh, Vax holding the still body of Scanlan just dangling out of his arms no 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 fix him fix him I would say that's a pretty heavy moment for just some meme characters, wouldn't you say? So don't be discouraged from trying out the edgy character. It might work out great, especially if you're careful about it and you really have the best intentions going into it. If it's done well and your character has more depth than just a meji, you will be just fine. Let me give you a quick recap of all the steps so that it's fresh in your mind for when you create your next character. First, commit to your character both in design and in roleplay. Second, make a character that works in a group. That is probably the most important point. Third, describe your character in a way that emphasizes whatever angle you're trying to push for your character. For the purposes of this video, edgy. Fourth, even if your abilities are not dark enough for your liking, you can always reflavor them and make them darker and creepier. Five, edgy characters can work, just give them enough depth. Just like most characters, basically. And if you're gonna play an edgy character, may I recommend checking out some of the most evil spells that exist in the game? They might be a good fit for your character. 